roll up your blanket, place it the long ways, like the, the same width as your mat, place it that way on the mat, and then have it be placed kind of on the upper back of like the end, the very top end is where about the armpits finish. And then just let the spine continue to relax all the way up and over. So it's just a very subtle little back bend. If your back gets into it and you don't really like it, you can always just pull it away. It's not necessary. But it's just an easy kind of simple back bend to get ourselves started. Take your time getting settled into it. When you get laying down, allow yourself to be in a spot where the breath is really flowing. So we're gonna play with the breath for a moment. First start by breathing deep into the belly area. See how with this little back bend, see how it feels to breathe into belly. With a slight back bend, it, it's very nice because it kind of brings that belly area into just a little bit of a stretch just by breathing. Those so abdominal muscles get a chance to be there. And take a couple of breaths, trying to breathe into the chest area. How expansive that spot is. belly rising and then the chest rises after that. When we exhale, chest falls and then belly falls. breaths to get us started. Imagine each breath that we take when it's deep and full like this is like an eraser helping to just make our slate a little bit more clean. Sometimes we start first thing in the morning and our brain already fills up our chalkboard with so many things to think about, so many things to try to remember and, and to, to, you know, make sure we do this today and Make sure we don't forget to pick up this thing or whatever. There's so many things that can fill up in our brain. But for at least this time that we're sharing together, let's try to experience a little bit more of that blank slate. Every breath that's conscious and deep, like the eraser taking a good swipe across the board. Just to kind of help us get kick started with that state, let's take three more huge breath cycles flowing in and out. Two more as deep as possible. last one we can work on removing the blanket so some of us might roll kind of completely off like a fetal position to the side and scoot the, the blanket away some of us might find another way to come out so it doesn't matter too much but when you're ready return your back to be flat on the ground and then start to take knees into the chest purposely adding little bits of rocking movement so that way it helps those back muscles come back to this point
good. So from here, release just the left foot. You can keep the knee uh, bent. The foot is planted close to the glute. Right leg goes clear up to sky. So hands grab onto the back side of that leg. It might be at thigh, calf, toes. Each of us are at a different spot first thing in class. So just notice how much does this leg want to stretch right here, right now? Easy deep breaths flowing to help it out. Anchor your grip with the right hand as high up as you can on the right leg. And then give this leg a chance to open out as wide as it can to the right without left hip needing to lift. Get clear to that point where you're feeling the inner thigh stretch. Imagine kind of taking a couple of breaths to wipe a blank slate on this area of the body. And when leg works back up to the sky, the left hand takes over the outer part of that right leg. We're tilting this leg to about a 45 degree angle to the left. So it's the point where the right hip is just starting to lift off the ground. It should be getting into IT band. So if you don't feel that, you can play with the angle, maybe how close you're pulling it in, or maybe tilt it just a hair further. And that spot where IT band is speaking to you, the outer thigh. And then feel free to allow this to tilt all the way over into a twist. Right arm stretches clear up to the right side to counter the straight left or the straight right leg going to the left. Feel the back muscles get this chance to open. Notice where you feel it the most. Imagine sending a couple of breaths to kind of wipe that spot clean. Blank slate. Another huge breath, flowing in, length slate release. And then as we start to return our hips down to the ground again, take the right ankle to the left thigh. Let's set up the figure four stretch. We're threading arms around the left side, maybe reaching around thigh, maybe reaching around shin, whatever we can clasp around. Good. I'm already hearing those good deep breaths flowing. Imagine that being the blank slate for the hip now. One more huge breath cycle flowing in. Exhale, wipe it clean. And we'll begin to switch sides. So right foot can drop down to the ground. Left leg starts to work its way up to sky. Grab on wherever you can reach. Feel it being pulled inward. and lots of breath. So 
anchor the left hand as high as you can grab and then let the left leg be supported as it's trying to go wide to left. Make sure right hip doesn't have to lift and tilt super far. back up. Right hand takes over the outer calf or ankle area. So the leg halfway to the right. That 45 degree angle for the IT band. tilt all the way to the ground. Left shoulder peels back open to the left. Feel the spine in the twist. Length, slight breath, just kind of wiping anything that feels intense right now. Huge breath in. Exhale. This unit, we lift it all back up. Take the left ankle to the right thigh. Figure four stretch, hugging around. Another breath, flowing all the way in. Exhale. Uncross the ankle. Just to give our body a little bit more warmth, drop the hands down on the floor by the hips. And we'll let our legs do a few bicycles. So right leg stretches up to sky. Go all the way to the point where you feel the hamstring and the back side of the leg stretch. Lower that leg down to hover above the ground. As it comes in, left leg stretches up to sky, get all the way to the point where you feel it, and then lower it down. So it's just about as much about that stretch upward as it is about the core getting a little bit more stability. See if you can synchronize some breaths. Inhale when the leg stretches up, exhale when it starts to lower. Three more sets to each leg. Two. Last one each. Both knees come in. Let's try to roll like a ball two or three times. By that second or third one, we're going to try to stay balancing in both poses. So ultimately, in boat pose, it's perfectly fine to leave the hands. It's also fine to release the hand, making it a little bit more difficult. Your choice. 
Maybe right leg straightens out for a moment. Maybe left leg. You want to try for full. Try to go for two more full breath cycles. I know it's hard. Good. Take the bottoms of feet together into cobbler's pose. And just allow the spine to release off the nose. Okay, so as we rise up, if it's not too much work to leave the legs like this, leave them. If you need to switch to cross leg, that's okay too. But we're gonna keep the right hand on the right ankle, the right shoulder's trying to just drop down. Left hand reaches to hover up to that left side. Continue to allow it to kind of pull away that left side. And then the right ear drops over right shoulder. So this should be a stretch for the, the left hand neck, shoulder area. Welcome to tilt the head slightly behind the shoulder, jaw rotates up. Your back equal over shoulder. And maybe for a moment, nose turns down toward that right armpit. And back up. So clasp left hand to left ankle to ground us. Right hand starts to reach. Left ear drops over left shoulder. You need to pull that hand even further to the right. That's fine. Maybe stay or maybe head slightly behind the shoulder. Draw rotates up. And ear equal over shoulder. And head tilting in front of shoulder, nose turning down. Head back equal. One more breath in. Out. Head rises up, both hands grabbing on to help the spine set up really tall. We'll take our school shining breath, not the lofty. With this one, we exhale completely. Once we don't have air, then we relax the diaphragm that it's not trying to inhale, but the relaxation of diaphragm naturally feels a little bit, and then we push it back out. So it's mostly about a squeezed pulse of the diaphragm. It looks like this. Okay, so we're gonna go for about 50 rounds of it. Just take a normal inhale. Normal exhale, and start to pulse. Each pulse wipes the skull clean. Hold without air. Inhale, completely hold with air. Hold it a little bit longer. Good. Return back to normal breath. Lift the knees back up to boat. Maybe choose option one and stay. Maybe hands release. You'd like to try maybe right leg straightens for a moment and maybe left leg for a moment back to bent or both legs straighten holding five four three 
two, one. Bottoms of feet come back together. This time they're really far forward. Spine releases all the way up and over. It's a very different stretch going to the low back. Three up. From here, keeping both sitting bones completely grounded. Walk the hands forward and then over toward the right. We're trying to get our spine to be more or less the same angle as that right side. Center, eventually over to the left side. So the low back muscles have that chance to stretch. Go back through the center. Take a bonus breath. Let it flow in. Out, wiping it clean. Walking back in. Shift the placement of your legs if you need the help to sit up tall. Otherwise, hands to knees. Let's do 50 more cycles of that full shining breath. Each breath is kind of wiping our, our, our brain. Just clean slate. Take a normal breath in, normal exhale, and begin. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Exhale completely, hold without air. This brings our body back into that normal proportion of carbon dioxide to oxygen. Inhale, hold with air. Back to normal breath. Pick up the knees one more time, boat. Maybe hands stay on thigh, maybe hands release. Maybe try out right leg straightening. Maybe left leg. Maybe full. Another five, four, three, two, one. Legs release to the ground, go nice and wide. Slide the hands forward and through. As we ease back up, let's come to a kneeling place. As we ease, take a few of the cat cows, make sure the spine, the low back, all those areas feel good. Rounding up to the sky, and then dropping belly down. Go a few cycles, see if you can synchronize with your breath. One more cycle, up and down. When we come back to a flat spine, take your right knee to float up to this right side. And 
then let that be have a couple of huge circles to each direction. So maybe three circles clockwise, and three circles counter. Good. Switching to left leg, same thing. A couple of circles to each side, helping those hips to ease open. Hips are a space where sometimes we have a lot of energetic jump. Go ahead and switch directions. Let's display a space where oftentimes we have to focus the, the, the cleansing breath to get back to that blank slate. Uh, dropping down, take it to downward facing dog. If you need the legs to wiggle out just a little bit, help to ease some of the tight spots. Right leg clear up to sky. Let the knee bend for a moment. Send the toes behind your back. Let yourself tilt the toes back just a little bit so you're trying to stretch the front of the hip. The leg stretches back up to sky. Get the right foot to step to the outside of right hand. The back knee lowers down. You have two options from here. So the hips are sinking forward first and foremost. Option one, the right toes start to turn out to the right just a little bit. Right hand is on the, the thigh, trying to push the thigh really far open. That's option one. Option two, right hand circles all the way to try to grab the back toes. Some people can do that, some people not, so don't feel any pressure if that doesn't feel good. Inhale, exhale, return both hands to plant forward, the back toes tuck, right toes turn forward. So lift up that back knee, drop the heel down, cartwheel directly open into warrior two. Right elbow drops down the right thigh. Stretch the other arm forward. Extend the side angle. And back up warrior two. Let's reverse it. So left hand to left leg. Left hand stretches to the back wall. And warrior two, shorten the stance up to warrior one, hips face forward, clasp hands behind the back, shoulder stretch, bowing all the way up and over. Release the hands, let them sweep down to the ground, and circle up to help us rise. From here, we're gonna shift our weight onto the front foot. Left thigh wraps all the way around, eagles wrap. The left thigh over, left elbow goes under. You can always drop toes to the ground for kickstand. It's perfectly fine. Unwind the arms, try to grab under the left thigh as we straighten the standing leg. This left leg tries to kick forward for a moment, so let's stretch. As we release, sweep the leg back, standing split. Left foot is trying to reach really high to the sky. Good. And then this is the funky transition. So left leg, the one that's floating right now, is eventually going to land to the outside of that right foot, and we're coming down to a seated place. So if you end up just trying to sit instead, it's going to be seated with the right leg crossing over. 
So you've got the left leg feet for the switch. There you go. Over. Yep, you got it. Okay, take a little twist. So left elbow hooks. You should be twisting to front door. Good. So returning forward, leave the left leg, the one that's on the ground. This right leg is going to do a complete hip circle to come all the way back behind us into pigeon pose. Pick the hips up so the sacrum is level. That's it. So get all the way around. You got it. And this is, I know, kind of a different. <laughs> exactly. This is a spot you can go grab your blanket, placing it under that left hip. You don't have to, it's there if you want it. Moving the blanket if it's there, rock your left hip all the way down to the ground, and then just continue to rotate open until you can sit. So you should be facing us toward the front door, left foot tucked in. So allow the right toes, the toes of the straight leg to be pointed straight up to sky. From here, place the hands down in front of you on the floor, so in front of your chest, and then go directly forward. Go ahead and start easing your weight a little bit closer for the straight leg. So as we rise up, leave the left leg down. This right leg, we're cradling it out. So use your hands or your elbow creases. Rock that left, or sorry, this right leg. Rock it out. Try not to confuse you more than we already are. <laughs> good. When that feels pretty good, we're going to try to go for fire log. So we're trying to drop down to shin stack, right shin on top of left shin. This is another space where you could bring that blanket under the right knee to help pad it a little bit. If the hips are not easily able to stay down, just drop it to cross leg instead. That's a perfectly fine option. So from here, we're going to try to lean forward. So fingers come to the floor in front of us. Maybe there's a little bit of space to continue to ease a little bit. your hands in. Got all that to do on the second side. So let's start off coming back to kneeling. Let's do a couple of motions for the hips. So this might be just a small wagging of your hips left and right, or it could be huge hip circles. Whatever helps to ease some of the tightness right out. Okay, so when you feel ready for downward facing dog, let's touch the toes, lift the hips up high. We're 
We're gonna start floating left leg up to sky. Bend the knee, trying to send the toes just a little bit behind your body. Front of the hip open. Inhale. Exhale. And allow left foot to step to outside of left foot. The back knee can drop to floor. Let the hips be sinking forward. So two options. Left toes turn to the left. Maybe you take the option to push the hand into the thigh, holding the hip from there. Or maybe left hand drags those back to the loops. Personal practice. Lift up the back knee. Back heel drops down. Our heart filling open directly to warrior two. So already make sure this front thigh is rotating open. It's natural to kind of collapse in. So keep it rotating open. Extended side angle, front elbow drops down. The other arm starts to reach. two. Reverse it. Warrior two. Shorten the stance. Warrior one. Face forward. Last hand behind the back. Let's pull into that shoulder stretch as we bow forward. Sweep under, forward, and up. From here, we're shifting our weight onto the front leg toward Eagle's pose. Right thigh wraps. Once you've got your legs established, right elbow can go under. leg starts to straighten. I'm going to the arm so you can grab under the right thigh. Try to straighten the spine back up. Right leg tries to kick forward, get into the stretch. Right leg sweeps under and back. Standing split. Right leg tries to reach up really high. Fingers are welcome to be on the floor. And here's that funky transition. So if you need to watch for a moment, the idea is right knee trying to come to the outside of that bottom foot. So sit down. Yep, you got it. Yes. The worst case scenario, if you just end up dropping down for a minute, you should just have left leg crossed over. So whenever you get there, right elbow hooks around the knee. We're twisting toward the thigh, or in other words, put that back. Spine unwinds, the bottom leg, right one, leave it. The top leg goes all the way to pigeon behind steps. Pick up your hips to make sure the sacrum is level. You're welcome to drop down. Obviously, blanket is useful if you want it.
more breaths. Imagine those breaths being blank slate for the hip. You finish the second one. This, this is the one that will turn us open to the back door this time. So you're rocking your weight onto right hip and just swiveling open to face the long edge of the mat. So try to keep both sitting bones down, hands plant to the floor immediately in front of your chest. Slide forward there first. Sometimes I'll peek at the left toes, try to make sure they're still pointing up. Depending on your your particular leg. Some people have a tendency to turn in, some people to turn back, but try to keep it more or less up. You're welcome to make your way a little bit more toward the straight leg. So as we rise back up, we're taking the left leg into the cradling position, the straight one. It's up in our arms, we're cradling, cradling that hip, rocking it left and right. How this side does with shin stack. Sometimes one hip is absolutely not able to stay rested if you do that, so you could drop to cross leg if you need to. Grab the blanket to tuck under the left knee if you need to. When you're ready, find the floor in front of you and just inch your fingers forward as much as the hips will go. more good deep breath a slight here easing our way back up let's take our way back to kneeling movements for the hips that feel helpful Just a little bit more mobility before we completely wrap up. So up to down dog one more time. We're going to reach the right leg clear up to sky when we're there. And then just three times, take that right knee to nose, shift forward to plank. Left to back up to down dog, toes lift. Good. Two more on the right leg, shift forward and return. One. Good, after the reach, send right foot to ground. Left leg three times, reach up high. And forward, three. And up. Two. One. Beautiful, toes down. 
drop to kneeling. Slide the hands in under the shoulders if they were further forward. Take the right hand up to sky, feel it reach up high. And thread the shoulder all the way under and through to the ground. Left hand can wrap around your low back or walk up to the top of the mat. Your choice. Beautiful. Preparing to unwind, slide the left hand in. Gently press into it. Maybe a nice little cat. How? Good. Step to neutral. Left hand reaches up high. Thread it through. Right hand reaches or wraps. One more breath of blank slate to this side. And plant the right hand in front of the face, press into it. The cat. Cow. And come down to seated. This easy position, whatever feels comfortable. From seated, drop the chin to the chest. You don't have to use hands if you're already in a really good neck stretch. If you want to though, you can clasp hands together, placing them on the back of the head. We're not trying to pull the head in. Instead, we're trying to weigh the head down so gravity can do its work even better. Breath in, exhale, release the hands, let the head just kind of float its way back up. We're going to work our way down onto our mat. Let's roll down one vertebrae at a time if we can. Once we're down all the way solid, our spine is relaxed, allow. Right leg to stretch up to sky. Give it one more chance to give it a really good stretch upward. Hands grab on, pull it in. And then allow this right knee to cross really tightly over left knee. Once it's there, thighs come into the chest. We try to grab onto each foot. So one last chance to get deep into those hips. Send a couple of those cleansing breaths. One more huge inhale. Exhale, release. Right foot drops to ground. Left leg up to sky. Give it a good tug in. Release the left knee to cross really tightly over. And then thighs come into the chest. Grab each hand for each ankle. Yeah. Closer to knees is the easier version. Breath is cleansing through the whole system. Working our slate totally and completely clean. Not a care in the world right now. In this moment, everything's okay. So why worry? One more huge breath in. Exhale, release. If you're ready for Shavasana, you can start to find what that might look like today. If you have last poses you need, go ahead and take them. 
since we have our blanket today, you could use it for Shavasana if you want to. You could use the blanket as just a little bit of weight on your belly to calm things down. You could place blanket under the knees for a little bit of low back relief. You could place the blanket under our back like how we started or even turn it the other way so it's running up our vertebrae. But lots of options for blanket. Feel free to keep exploring last poses and then ultimately find the Shavasana that will be the highest good for your body today. No rush to get there, just when your body's ready.
begin to return. Start with just a few good cleansing breaths, wiping away any last residual energy that we don't Introduce little movements back to the body, fingers and toes, ankles and wrists. Stretching out like it's first thing in the morning. Actually taking a nice fetal position off to one side when you're ready. And perhaps two or three more bonus breaths until you feel ready to rise nice and comfortably. As we join hands together in front of the heart, we return back to that idea one more time of creating a blank slate for us. Remembering that this doesn't have to happen just during a yoga class. We can always take a few breaths and imagine in our mind's eye, we're wiping with an eraser, our slate clean, swipe by swipe. So with this visualization to lead us on, Let's wrap up the time we got to share together today with the sound of oh, deep inhale now. May we be filled with light, happiness, and peace. Namaste.